Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, bringing you another engineering video here. This time we're going to talk a little less about engineering and a little more about where does your electricity come from? So I know, I mean, I've always wondered this and nobody really explained it to me until I got a job in the power industry. And I thought it's really important for everybody to kind of know where your, where your electricity comes from and how it works. Like, you know, when you pay your electric bill, you're not really worried about where it comes from. You just know that it's always going to be there. You don't really think about it. So I'm going to explain where the power come from, comes from and how the grid, the grid is another name for just, I guess, all of the power lines and power plants and houses and everything all connected. It's like one big interconnected web of power, how all that works. So... Uh, the easiest way to explain it is to explain it in terms of demand versus load, or demand versus uh, supply. So the easiest way to imagine kind of the demand cycle of electricity is, you know, everybody wakes up in the morning, um, so it's pretty quiet in the morning, you know, everybody's sleeping, and then when everybody wakes up, they get up, they take a shower in the morning, they use hot water, they turn on their coffee makers, they cook breakfast. So usually what you see is you see a little spike in the morning. Then it kind of levels off a little bit. And then it gets hotter around noon, around the middle of the day. And uh, a lot of the ACs, the air conditioning starts kicking on in a lot of people's homes and a lot of people's businesses. So ACs are running full tilt. So you see a large demand in electricity during the day. Then it kind of levels off or rounds off a little bit. And as everybody goes home from work around 5 o'clock and they're going home, uh, their houses are usually pretty, you know, uh, I guess, electric friendly where they're not really using a lot of electricity until they get home. They throw a load of clothes in the laundry. They turn on all the lights. You know, they start cooking dinner. And what you actually see is there's another uh, little bit of a peak in the electricity demand. And then it kind of flattens off for nighttime again when everybody's going back to sleep. And all the lights go back off and um, the ACs are working less hard because the temperature has dropped. So this is your average demand. Um, now, where does the electricity come from when the demand cycle looks like this? One thing to remember is... Whenever there's electricity being um, requested from a household or a business, on the other side of your socket in the wall or your coffee maker plugged into the wall, on the other side of that, far, far away is a power plant that is giving you electricity. So um, there's three different types of technologies mainly that are used to deliver us electricity. The first one is called baseload technology. Baseload technology is the technology where it's just there to kind of meet the very minimums of the electric demand at all times. So baseload can be best drawn by, if I start drawing the demand cycle, baseload is going to basically be this very flat-lined electricity. So um, just to make things easier... Um, why don't we go ahead and just assume that demand is actually uh, starting off here and then it kind of just goes up um, from here. So base load technology is the technology that it's kind of the, the spinal cord of the grid. It's nuclear plants. It's coal plants. It's heavy duty gas turbines. It's big huge power plants that start up very slowly and they usually stay on all the time they're basically there all the time and they're giving a steady power to the grid um, usually they're very large outputs in megawatts so they're outputting a lot of power um, and it's since they're outputting so much power they usually stay on all the time and they don't shut down very often um, Fast start technology, skipping all the way to the right, is uh, technology also known as peaker units. So we went over base load. P 
peaker units is actually units that start very fast. So um, let's say there's a little a little ripple in the demand here, just to kind of give you an animation, where for some reason, let's say a big factory or something just demands power all of a sudden. Well, we know base load technology, nuclear plants, coal plants, and heavy-duty gas turbines, um, usually when they're at base load, they're at 100% load, which means they can't go any higher. So they, because they can't go any higher and they can't really overspeed themselves, um, peaker units come in and they say, you know what, I can start up really fast in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I can put power out right away. Just let me know, give me 15 minutes notice, and I can meet your demand. So these peaker units are actually going to come online, and they're going to basically trace the shape of the demand curve. And because they're very fast to start and stop, all day long, peaker units, they'll come on, they'll come off, they'll come on, they'll come off, all day long. And they're there to kind of smooth out the, the little wiggles in the demand curve we'll say. So now that you know what base load technology is, it gives you kind of a, a solid backbone of the grid. You know what peaker units do. They come in whenever there's a sudden surge of demand. They come in to kind of fill that empty spot, that void. Um, the only thing left to talk about is renewables. So renewables is your, your green energy, your environmentally friendly energy. Uh, solar, on the other hand, I think everybody kind of knows the answer to that one. Uh, you know, between maybe 9, p 9 a.m. and like 6 p.m., the sun is actually out, uh, shining full blast. You're going to get your most solar energy towards like lunchtime, the middle of the day when it's hot and sunny. Um, and then the sun's going to, you know, the sun's going to go down around, you know, 5, 6 or whatever time zone you're in. Or whatever your daylight savings is at. And then there's hydro. Hydro is, you know, hydroelectric energy, which is run by either big bodies of water or lakes or rivers. And it's going to basically provide DC power to the grid or AC in some circumstances. So the one thing that I really wanted to cover with renewables is that people always wonder what happens when the sun stops shining? What happens when the wind stops blowing? And that's really, really important to think about because when you think about the grid, if you have a bunch of wind turbines that are producing a lot of power output and then you know, the wind stops blowing all of a sudden, you're in really big trouble because people are not going to accept that their electricity is just going to disappear and produce, and produce let's say, a brownout. A brownout is where the frequency of the grid slows down because the power plants cannot keep up with the load. So basically, there's a sag in the frequency which could basically damage a lot of stuff on the grid. A lot of stuff that depends on that 60 hertz signal. So in a circumstance like this, usually you'll have these, uh, these heavy duty plants like gas turbines, for example, they'll actually overfire or go larger than a hundred percent in some cases they can go up to a hundred and six percent capacity so they're going to basically um you know over rev themselves to make up for the difference in the cases where the heavy duty plants actually cannot fill that void you're going to have the peaker units come on and they're going to come on and pick up for that um, reduced wind or reduced solar. So if a cloud comes over and the sun's not shining anymore and all your solar panels are all of a sudden, you know, uh, your solar farm output drops by 20% or 30%, that could be, you know, hundreds of megawatts or tens of megawatts depending on how big your solar farm is. That's a really big deal. And usually you have peaker units come on because they're fast starting and they can come on the grid and they can pick up that demand right away. So overall, in a nutshell, this is how electricity works on the grid. This is where your electricity comes from. Most of your electricity is going to come from baseload technology because it's very cheap to make. Um, coal, for example, is very, um, I guess, cheap to get and cheap to produce electricity from. Heavy-duty gas turbines 
have high efficiency whenever they're combined with a steam turbine, which is also known as a combined cycle configuration. Uh, you know, energy efficiency for these types of systems are up to, you know, over 60% nowadays. So uh, efficiency is very high um, for like, you know, gas turbines and nuclear plants where, you know, the fuel is in abundance and they put out a lot of power. Uh, the power is going to be cheaper and they're base load technologies so they run all the time for peaker units um, electricity is not usually as cheap because they're not usually as efficient because they're usually either smaller gas turbines or even aero derivatives aero derivatives are basically jet engines that are either trailer mounted or they're uh, you know set up on a little configuration somewhere maybe outside of a wind farm or somewhere convenient where they can be fired up right away and produce power um, so air derivatives are just smaller gas turbines uh, basically that that's where the name comes from it's a derivative of, of an airplane engine or a jet engine that you would fly on every single day so uh, I hope I hope this uh, was a good explanation for everybody and a good wake-up call for like you know where does our electricity come from um, you know, most people don't really know, but if you're interested, which I'm always interested in this kind of stuff since I work in this space, you can just go online and you can Google all the power plants in your area and you can see like a pie chart of where does my electricity come from? Is it mainly a nuclear plant? Is it make mainly a, a gas turbine plant? You know, um, and just remember, uh, renewables are, you know, greener energy, but when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, that's when, you know, like on-demand energy sources come into play, like gas and air derivatives and different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, supply, energy uh, generation supplies come from. So, um, anyways, uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.